evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back for the fifth bout of the evening. Fight fans from around the world, get ready for your Empire Boxing main, co-main event brought to you by Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut is Canada's favorite place to order pizza, pasta, and wings, and so much more. For fast and delicious delivery or pickup, use code 839 to snag one of Pizza Hut's favorites for $10. This bout is sanctioned by the BC Athletic Commission. Your judges at ringside for this fight are Ed Pearson, Ed Garner, and Rick Shannon. And now we welcome in the blue corner, Brian Samuel. Here comes Brian Samuel to the ring. Brian is from Red Deer, Alberta, and last fought in 2019. Two of Samuel's biggest protests were against Devin Reddy and Stuart McClellan, who we saw in the corner earlier this evening with Sean Archer. Stuart was the former CPBC Super Welterweight Champion in 2016. Brian's coming off five consecutive losses, however, the combined record of these opponents is 46 and five. He is not unfamiliar to the professional ranks, and I'm sure he's ready to give Josh Johnson some trouble here in his pro debut. Absolutely, Ryan. It'd be interesting to see. I think um, between them, they've got the most fights, like as you said, on tonight's card. Um, just, I think they're probably two from stylistically quite different pugilists. And so now we evening. welcome in the red corner, Josh Johnson. Brian Samuel's opponent coming to the ring now is Josh Johnsey. Josh was born in London, England, but moved to Surrey, British Columbia at a young age. As an amateur, he was the world junior welterweight Muay Thai champion, and he won the North American Welterweight Kickboxing Championships. Over the last several years, Josh's professional kickboxing record is 31 and 10. The majority of these were with Glory Kickboxing. Josh and his father set up and run the World Kickboxing Academy in Surrey, British Columbia, and he is making his professional debut this evening. I asked Josh during the pre-fight press conference, why professional boxing at this point? And he simply told me, I'm bored. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's one way to cure your boredom is to enter into a sport like this. I think a man, uh, as a man who's uh, you know, been involved at that level of combat sports for so long, there's obviously a confidence about it, but uh, I could think of better things to maybe my board than Aero. I mean, it makes sense if you want to, you're bored, do something a little less than what you did, drop the kicks and just start throwing the punches. But, <laughs> I mean, it's easy to say, but it's different. It's a different ballpark. Absolutely. Tark, as you said, this is a really interesting stylistic matchup. Josh is a, stall, a tall stand-up boxer. Likes to fight from distance, counter punch, and Brian Samuels, you'll see here in the opening round. Head down, coming, so coming inside, trying to find that big overhand right or left hook. So stylistically, this should be as interesting as our second bout of the evening between Rhett Gibbons and Arya Shari. I absolutely agree there, man. You know, I think um, from a physique perspective, they are uh, quite different as well. So see how they use those attributes tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the co-main event of the evening. This fight is scheduled for four three-minute rounds of boxing in the middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, representing Red Deer, Alberta. This fighter is an orthodox boxer weighing in at 154 pounds with a record of five wins, seven losses, wearing the red trunks with the black trim, Brian Yardog Samuel! I don't know if you guys saw there, I had a little chuckle at his Instagram, was Happy Gilmore of Boxing. <laughs> and introducing his love opponent. That. Love it. Fighting out of the red corner from Surrey, British Columbia. A former welterweight kickboxing champion of North America, making his professional boxing debut, weighing in at 155 pounds, wearing the black trunks, Josh Johnson! 
Well, here we go. Our co-main event of the evening. Um, Brian Samuels, quite a character. Your referee for this evening's action is Joel Scobie. As I said earlier, Josh Johnson's originally from London, England, and Brian Samuel told me he prepared for this fight by watching Faulty Towers. So uh, Brian's quite a character, and uh, based on his style, as you'll see here in the opening round, he's going to come out, head down, trying to close the distance on Josh and uh, get to work early on. Absolutely. I mean, uh, there, are, there are very many ways to prepare for fights. Watching Faulty Towers is definitely Josh, not one of them. <laughs> so I wish, uh, I wish these two lads, these two pugilists, all the very best of luck going into this fight. He might just okay, be man. trained differently. <laughs> you never know, Rob. You never know. <laughs> I remind you to protect yourself at all times and follow my commands at all times. Touch gloves now. Come out at the belt. I don't know if you saw there, folks. That's a vicious stare. This guy means yes, business indeed. and... I'm yes, excited indeed. for this one. Send a couple of chills down my back, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I'm As I said, he, although he's coming off five straight losses, he has oh. sought, taught, uh, fought some top contenders here uh, in Canada, including Devin Reddy and Stuart McClellan. Yeah, top dudes. As predicted, here comes Brian. Head down, trying to close the distance early on and get inside here against Josh Jauncey. Josh with the head movement, stepping out, as I predicted as well, being a bit more the slicker opponent. Distance. Josh just, just needs to stay composed um, in these early rounds, especially in this first round here. Wait for an opening, find his distance. Don't let Brian smother him. Uh, establish that jab, and I think like Bunit did in the belt earlier, uh, start to land that right hand and left hook. Absolutely, Ryan. I was, I was going to say there are reflections of the start of Bunit and Tomas's fight, and um, yeah, and this fight now, and uh, stylistically, uh, nice right uppercut landed by Johnsey. Absolutely beautiful right uppercut there with uh, with the lad stepping in. So it could be a long night if he doesn't stop that. Let go, guys. Your hands are free. As I've seen from Josh's past glory kickboxing uh, videos, he does have a nice jab. He uses it very well um, to set up everything else. And as you've seen early on, he just used it there to set up that beautiful right hand. I was thinking the same uh, early on, seeing uh, Samuel have that, that jab hand real low. And with the height advantage that John C has, I am expecting him to keep going with that over top right. The uppercut's landing early on here as well for John C inside against Samuel. Nice counter right hand as Brian comes in. Great Legs timing. look to buckle a little bit there as well. Brian's uh, a tough guy, but he can't take too many uppercuts or left hooks inside like that. Agreed, Ryan. I think it's going to be a long night if he's uh, if he's taking those punches. So I think adjustments need to be made for him to be able to focus on the rest of his game. I think Brian got hurt early on. You see Jauncey going to the body now yes. as well. We've got about a minute left in this opening round. It's two, two body shots. Those might not take their uh, toll immediately, but they add up for sure. There's that right hand over top. Absolutely, I think it's a wee bit Again. more discipline in that left hand would help him out, but uh, Josh is picking those right hand punches out very, very nicely now. We have 25 seconds left in the opening round. This has been a very composed and strong opening round for Josh Johnson in his professional boxing debut. Nice right Beautiful hand by Johnson here to finish off the first round. We got five seconds. We'll ride it out. Good job, boys. We're going to take a look at our Pizza Hut delivery of the night. We want to thank Pizza Hut for their ongoing sponsorship of Empire Boxing Promotions and Professional Boxing here in BC. We're going to go back to our previous bout between Bunit Bisla and Thomas Mukachi for our delivery of the night. Here's Bunit against the ropes, lands a right hand left hook and a right hand on Thomas Mukachi, finishing the fight off. Bunit Bisla moves to 3 0 as a pro and earns the Pizza Hut delivery of the night. Very well earned, Ryan. Absolutely sublime series of uh, punches there. Combination was absolutely beautiful. I think at that point, Tomas's conditioning had, had uh, been low enough for him to not be able to absorb them. So very well executed and definitely deserving of delivery of the night. Really exciting uh, and strong opening round for Josh Johnson. You see him in the corner there. He's, he seems in great shape. Ready to come out for the second round here of our co-main event. He looks good, real composed. Very composed indeed. Yeah. 
I'm expecting a similar kind of round, maybe maybe uh, picking it up with the power, the speed. I get worried seeing uh, Brian Samuel when he comes in close to closing the distance, his head's down, his eyes are not on his opponent. I'm finding him getting hit a lot. Some strong punches being landed here early by Samuel. I expect uh, Jauncey's watched some tape on Brian here because he was landing that uppercut in the early parts and, and latter parts of the first round there. Brian comes in charging with his head down and Jauncey's just catching him at will with that right uppercut. I think also Josh is he's quite adept now at creating quite a lot of nervous energy in Samuel with his, he's doing, executing a lot of very cheeky feints and coming off um, some nice counters in there. So that, will, uh, that will, won't do Beautiful. a lot of uh, help for Sean. Uh, As you talk there, there's that right hand parry yes, indeed, over the top that. right hand. Beautiful execution. If we can get more power on that, we uh, might be seeing a change of pace in this fight. Absolutely. If Brian's going to get stuck into this fight, he's got to do what he was doing in the early 20 seconds here of this second round. Yes. He cannot stand at the end of Jauncey's punches. Uh, obviously, Josh seems to have some power here, and he's landing some big shots again in the second round. Brian must close that distance, smother him like this, and start digging to the body. He cannot stand there it. Yeah, go. nice Beautiful right uppercut right landed uppercut. by Samuel. You told him, and he did it. Josh just smiled, but he needs to stay here if he's going to... You know, really close this gap right now. I think quite well out of the corner there by Josh Johnson, but beautiful right hand as you said. If you can do that, keep doing that. I think he'll earn his uh, he'll earn his keep tonight in this fight. Robert, what do you think about Josh here? I mean, obviously you know he's got an extensive uh, professional kickboxing background, but what do you think about him as a professional boxer? And uh, you know, do you think he could move up here in Canada and move through the ranks as a professional boxer? Yeah, I mean, I don't see why he couldn't. Uh, he's probably obviously has put in a lot of focus into just boxing. I actually, in the back of my mind, I always see when a kickboxer gets into the ring. I've had sparred with uh, many kickboxers. You always see for that little flinch of them kicking their leg up. But you can see John C. Of course, he, it doesn't always happen, and he's been training just for boxing. So hit, I like his style. I kind of find some similar techniques and what I like to do. Uh, you know, he likes to put on a show and, and be slick. And uh, I think a bit more on the defense practice would, would help him out just to not get caught by some silly punches. But, hey, this is his first, his first showing and uh, nerves are in play, you know. I love it. I like what I've seen with his jab. He, he's really using his jab effectively. Uh, he's got a beautiful right hand. He's actually got better boxing fundamentals than I've seen with a lot of kickboxers, and he, he's doing a good job on inside as well. Great stepping. Great stepping and angles. I like that his, he has a, a awareness to his angles. Not only that, I think it's worth mentioning, he's definitely uh, best shorts of the night. I haven't seen a pair of slicker shorts than that today. I love them. Short, really, short really and slick. Yeah. Short and slick. Good. Short and slick. Good left hook to the body here. Brian's really starting to take a lot of damage here, cumulatively over the, the three minutes here in the second round. We've got about 10 seconds left. Another strong round, round for Josh Johnson. And that's the end. Good second round for Josh Johnson. Uh, obviously up 2018 on, presumably on all three judges' scorecards at this point. I would have to agree with that. I think it's uh, quite safe to say that Josh is up in all, all the scorecards. I think I think Sean's got a wee bit of work to do coming out. Let's take a look at this replay here. Josh establishing his jab, finding his range. Nice right hand against Samuel. And a slick right uppercut. Just missed inside. There he goes with the other right, another right uppercut. You see Josh here just measuring, finding his distance, picking his shots really well. Whether they land or they don't, he's using his range really well, both on the inside and outside of the, in the first and second round here. Another thing to note, viewers might not, uh, that are familiar with boxing, that you can see John C. there in the corner. He's standing. He's not sitting. That's something we don't often see. Something more so to see in the amateurs. A coach will get their fighter to do, but not in the pros so much. I think psychologically, it's uh, we psych we psych game. He's probably playing with Samuel there. Going into the third round, I'd uh, definitely once more like to thank Pizza Hut, Canada's favourite place to order your pizza, pasta, wings, and so much more for fast, delicious delivery or pickup. Again, use code 839, snag one of Pizza Hut's favourites for $10. And a very special mention to a young man who's turning 15 tomorrow, Jacob Copeland. His family won the Pizza Hut contest for the show tonight. Congratulations to your family, Jacob, and very happy birthday, many happy returns, young man. Beautiful. Code 839, you said? 839 gets you a pizza for $10. You can't beat that. All right. So slick head movement by Jauncey here uh, in the first minute, minute and a half uh, of, the op of the third round. Nice right uppercut as well on the inside. Brian's a tough guy. Uh, he can obviously take a big shot, but uh, doesn't have a heck of a lot of head movement and is getting caught 
at will here by Josh. From nice what I can right see, a uh, little bit of blood in Josh's nose there. I'm not sure if it's come off Samuel. I can't see his left side. Um, I'm not entirely sure when it is that he got caught, but there's a little bit of blood coming out the right nostril of Josh. Johnsy's uh, turned to southpaw here uh, with two minutes to go in the third round, which is interesting. <laughs> he's obviously yes. feeling comfortable, able to land these shots, and he's starting to play a little bit with Brian. Yes, indeed. There he is. He's doing all his jab, and I find he's touching. He's touching, steps back, and looks for that big right, big left now. Good for him. He's, he's, uh, he knows where he is at in this fight, and uh, he's just trying to keep it at bay. And Agreed, Rob. I think, I think he's found his comfort zone, and I think he's just operating within there. That's and right. uh, he's putting on quite a nice show for us this evening. Well done to Josh. Well, Josh is, is clearly ahead here um, through the first three rounds, you know. Credit to Brian. It is Josh's nose that's bleeding. He is game. He is coming forward. I'd love to see him bury his, his head in, in Josh's chest and just work the inside because he's not quite effective from the outside uh, as I think he would hope to be. So right here where he is now, he needs to let his hands go. Yeah, I don't think we're giving Samuels enough credit for the power on his punches, too. Is They're just not as uh, showy, but they're... They're subtle, but when he lands, it looks like they're uh, hitting hard. And there you saw Johnsy with another uppercut. Yes, indeed. That head up. I think I think Josh is he's doing very, very well with his movement tonight. He's, cre he's creating those angles, making it very, very difficult for Sam to come forwards. Um, so it's gonna uh, with oh. a few adjustments, I think you can make it. But again, a nice left hand there, and I think Josh needs to keep uh, keep his eyes open because you never know what can happen in boxing. That's right. Sometimes it's <laughs> you're doing too much. Sometimes. Exactly. Exactly. Nice right with the slip out. Again, really nice jab here by Johnsy in the third round. Great right hand. Good. Good dig to the body here. We've got 10 seconds left in the third round. Josh continuing to work that right uppercut, which he's found a home for all night. Oof. But Brian's done a really good job as well, closing that gap and landing some shots on Johnsy. Yes, indeed, Brian. We're going to go to a quick re replay here. See if we can find where Josh got that bloody nose from. Brian's coming in. Digging to the body. Nice right uppercut by Josh. It looks like he's oh, he already got the bloody nose there at that He point. already had that at that point. I think it was off. It was a bit of a... A slow off, trickle. Oh, so just a wee trickle. That's right, Rob. Canada, this is how you deliver a perfect 10. $10 favorites from Pizza Hut. Canadian, Hawaiian, pepperoni, margarita. Just $10 each. No strings attached. Mmm. Now that's delivering. Hey, can somebody come get me down, please? You heard our referee this evening in between the rounds there, letting both boxers know we're heading into our fourth and final round. Hard to think that uh, any judge would have it different than 3-0 for Jauncey right now, but I do appreciate and respect Brian's um, resilience here. He's coming forward again in the fourth round, trying to make this entertaining, trying to find uh, a home for his right hand and left hook, so. And he landed that nice left hook. That's the water uh, your corner too. referee saw Johnsy's back legs slip after Johnsy caught that left hook. Time in. Josh, oh. time in, Bucks. Well, I, I, I think Josh has looked really good here in his professional boxing debut. I, you know, again, Brian's landed some shots here as well, and uh, he's found a home at times for the right hand. He's getting caught again with that right uppercut, but he's, he's really trying to find a home for the left hook and right hand, and he has caught Josh a few times. I'd like to see Josh's hands either up higher or him effectively slip those shots like we've seen just now. Yeah, I agree, Ryan. I think, yes. I think a wee bit more credit, Samuel's uh, grit. Um, he's, he's been busy tonight, he's put in a show, a lot of respect to him and you never, you never know what can happen in boxing but he's doing well, he's landing that left hand just a wee bit more regularly now. I don't know if it's enough but we shall see. Yeah. To be honest, outside of that right, right uppercut which he just landed again there, I've really been impressed with Josh's jab. Uh, I mean he could probably win this fight alone with his jab and I'd like to see him stick to that to set everything else up. Great combination, uppercut, step back over the top, doing it again, making it work. 
See, see how he's he's watching. He's watching his, his opponents. Samuels has his head down. He's not looking at him. He's keeping it tight. But he's getting caught like that when Samuels explodes for those punches. Josh is feeling really comfortable here now in this uh, fourth and final round. His hands are down. He's playing a little bit, taunting Samuel. Needs to be careful. Uh, Samuel's game, obviously, as we've said. Josh just needs to stick to his jab. Keep landing those punches just like that from the outside. Good right beautiful hand. Right beautiful, beautiful, shot. beautiful right hand. Beautiful right hand. Those are nice. He's feeling good. Test oh, and a good is. right uppercut. Followed then again by a beautiful Samuel uppercut. Samuel is tough. I yeah. have to say, lads. He's got a chin. They make them Son tough and red deer. <laughs> good for him. He's not stepping yeah, he's back. He's still coming, coming forward. forward. No, he's not. Cred massive credit to him. He's really created a, a nice, entertaining fight. Good. Uh, yeah. A lot of respect to him. Big chin on the boy. And he's still getting those little ones in there. He's still sneaking them in. No, he's making Josh earn his money tonight. That's, that's for right. sure. We have 20 seconds left here in the fourth and final round of our co-main event. Really looking forward to our main event coming up, sponsored by Hall Construction. We have the lightweight unification bout between Alex Torres from Hall Constructors, pardon me, and Jose Lara, who came in from Mexico via Ontario. Our main event's coming up, sponsored by Hall Constructors. Well, there you have it. That's the end of our co-main event between Josh Johnsey and Brian Samuel. Really entertaining fight. I mean, presumably Josh won that bout four rounds to zero, but Brian Samuel gave a really game account of himself coming forward in all four rounds. Got caught with a lot of right uppercuts and some nice right hands, but did his best to get inside of Josh and uh, make a fight of it. What did you guys think? Absolutely, Ryan. I mean, um, great debut performance from Josh Johnsey. Very comfortable fighter, quite slick. Uh, comfortable in both stances. Um, massive credit to Brian Samuel from Red Deer. Uh, they certainly make them tough out there. He, uh, he made Josh, uh, obviously, earn, earn his keep for the evening. I think uh, Josh's movement and the uh, angular shift was a little bit too much for, for Brian in the evening. And uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty clear result. What, about, what are your thoughts there, Rob? Uh, I think you guys laid it out already. You left me nothing to say, but I mean, it's clear as day there. Two different styles, of course. Uh, Samuel's the kind of guy you want in an opponent. Uh, really, game comes back to you, comes back to you after you land those hard combos. Makes you work for that money and makes you work for that win for sure. Uh, I don't know, John C. Coming in off of, I just really surprised and. Uh, it's cool to see a guy come from uh, absolutely, the especially, background of kickboxing. Uh, especially that he did this because he didn't have thing. anything else to do, evidently. I love it, yeah. So, you know, uh, what better way to spend your Friday right. evening? That's right. He's not not a good boxer. Good no, I agree. Appreciate, Appreciate him. him. Just like to also take this opportunity to thank Everlast Canada, global leader in boxing fitness equipment, not afraid to keep pushing those boundaries. Welcome to the next level and long live boxing with Everlast. They're absolutely beautiful gloves. I really want to know what color that is. Ryan, have you any idea what color that is? I'm going to stick with Robert Cousins and say gunmetal. Gunmetal, yeah. gunmetal grey. I was almost, I would almost even say like a rose silver. A rose silver. Yeah. What does that look like? Uh, you know, it looks like the gloves. Despite the fact that Johnsy has an extensive professional kickboxing record, it is impressive that in his professional debut he took on a veteran of 12 pro fights. So good for him. Absolutely, Ryan. Absolutely. That's a man confident in his abilities. Cards. These judges score the bout. 40-36. 40-36 and 39-37 with the winner by unanimous decision in the red corner, Josh Johnson! Well, there you have it. 40-36, 40-36, and 39-37, I believe it was. Yes, one it of was. these judges gave Brian Samuel one of the rounds. You know, I, I again... I think we've all said it a number of times here. Hats off to Brian Samuel, who came from Red Deer. There's the backflip by Josh Johnson winning his professional debut. Um, tough opponent, 
Brian came to fight. I'm not sure I would have given him any of those rounds, but a clear unanimous victory I think victory there might be Josh another Johnson. fight as to who gets out of the ring here first. Then. <laughs> I was hoping you'd and say that. And I was just going to say, I don't think Brian Samuel saw backflips like that on <laughs> Faulty Towers. So thanks to those lads. Absolutely fantastic uh, showing from both of them. And uh, Classy of Brian, Bram, Brian Samuels, excuse me, for holding the ropes too and making sure that he gets out there. Absolutely. He also left the ring by another way as well. That, so. Hey, if you know boxing, that stuff counts. It's a gentleman's Absolutely. sport. That's for sure. Absolutely. We don't play around. No. We hurt each other but we love each other, right? Indeed. Indeed, Quote Rob. Me. We'll uh, give Josh Johnsy a few minutes here to get mic'd up and uh, have a chat with him about what it was like to have his professional boxing debut here at the gaming stadium. Thanks again to Empire Boxing Promotions uh, for putting this fantastic event together. Uh, there's been very few professional or amateur boxing events held in Canada over the last year due to COVID. And Empire, Empire Boxing Promotions has really led the way. They held a tremendous amateur boxing event last year uh, here at the Gaming Stadium in October. And now they're back at it, holding this incredible event, the resurgence at the Gaming Stadium. Thanks to the Gaming Stadium uh, here in Richmond, British Columbia for continuing to host these fantastic events. I really hope we can hold more of these here in the future. Absolutely, Ryan. I mean, without, without the, the efforts of Empire Boxing Promotions, I don't think we'd have had such a fantastic show. Again, thanks to all the sponsors. I'd like to have a, a quick shout out as well to Mark Gervin Law. Um, sponsorship provided is the Criminal Defence Council um, and we'd like to thank him as well and all the my other sponsors. It looks like uh, Josh Johnson is mic'd up and ready for the post-fight interview. We'll go there now. Josh, congratulations. Uh, as we said during the pre-fight press conference, I know you're a veteran, a very experienced kickboxer. Uh, congratulations on your first professional boxing victory. What was it like being in there? What were the differences? Uh, what was that experience like for you? Um, yeah, it was, uh, for the most part, a fight, a fight to fight. Um, I didn't feel the urge to kick or anything like that. A lot of people thought I was, a lot of people worried about. Um, except for one point over here when we slept, I almost hurt a knee. But um, no, uh, it, yeah, it was good. The only thing that felt uh, strange was being so so long out of the ring, and uh, we, you know, due to COVID and all that. And to be honest, I'm sort of glad it went the the, the distance because uh, I wanted to get the rounds in. Again, four rounds is uh, yeah, that's nice compared to my usual three in kickboxing. Yeah, you know, good for you. I think we all scored it here uh, backstage 40-36. It was 40-36, 40-36. I think one of the judges gave a round to Brian Samuel. Right. Talk to us about your opponent. I mean, I think you picked him at will. You caught him with uppercuts and right hands. You effectively used the jab. But, hey, he was a game opponent. He came forward, and uh, he came for a fight. So talk to us about your opponent, Brian Samuel. Yeah, he, he is tough. What can I say? <laughs> Man, I, I cracked him. That was the first time in, a, in my whole career, my whole fight career, where I hit him. And I went, whoa, and he stayed, he stayed there. Like I properly hit him and had time to acknowledge how hard it was and he still stood there. I, for sure he thought he was going down. Um, it was, it, unfortunately, like, it was making me throw so hard. Um, I, I felt I was getting sloppy, which I wasn't very happy about. There was a few times where I was left really, uh, really open. Luckily enough, my head movement sort of got me out of there. Sometimes, other times I, I did get hit. But um, it's good to get hit after so long of not being in the ring like that. It's good to get a few, a few shots like that just to get warmed up again, get the, get, the, get the chin warmed up and get the brain warmed up and all that, you know? Yeah, well, he's obviously a tough, awkward guy. He came forward, made you work for your victory tonight. I think your skill and experience prevailed clearly. Last question for you. Are we going to see you back in the boxing ring or are you going to go back to kickboxing? Um, obviously, it was an impressive first victory. You fought a guy with 12 professional bouts. Tell us what the future holds in store for Josh Johnson. Yeah, well, I mean, I never take easy fights. I've never taken an easy fight in my entire kickboxing career. I don't plan on doing any boxing career either. Um, you know, if the opportunity arises, I'll take it. Uh, at the moment, you know, there's not many fights for me in kickboxing either. I love boxing. I've always loved boxing. Um, ever since someone told me I wasn't very good at boxing for a kickboxer, I've tried to be a better boxer. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I really enjoy that. That was just so fun. Um, yeah, I'd love to come back. I love to, uh, and it's so it's, it's nice to fight in Vancouver again. I haven't fought here for nearly 10 years, and um, this is the first time I've got to fight at home, sleep in my own bed before the fight, and all that. And it's just it's so different, and it's uh, it's so strange. I'm usually always in hotels in different countries, and yeah, it was nice to fight at home. So you know, Empire is a great great organization. Um, Dan is a great guy, and he you know he's honest and he's, uh, he he treats everyone good. So yeah, I enjoy this, and it was fun. I have to thank all my sponsors. Uh, Grindhouse, yeah, Grindhouse, they, they did so much for me. Um, Training Day Cafe, as you can see there. Um, all my sponsors here, Bambino, Oreno, uh, uh, Bibiano, my, my brother, yeah, uh, Dovey Mechanical, and of course, the back. Yeah, Grindhouse again, Essex. 
the Training Day Cafe, Fight Cartel, and Perfect Supplements, yeah? And don't forget the Cobra name, yeah? The Jauncey. Yeah, we're here to take over. Kickboxing, boxing, whatever, it doesn't matter. As long as I get to fight someone, I don't care. I just want to fight people. Well, we're glad you were able to get back in the ring. Um, really excited to have you hopefully continue your future here in the professional boxing ranks. Congratulations on your first professional boxing victory, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. As we say, kickboxing, oosh.